All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this MXP50M uh, amplifier. Uh, I did a video on this specifically, I don't know, about two months ago, and it may have shown up in another video or two because I like using this amplifier. One of the things I'll mention is, is that uh, it does have this manual setting on the front. You can go from 80 to 10 uh, meters. Works pretty well, and I get about 40 to 45 watts out depending on the band and depending upon the power input into this. Now, what I always get with this uh, amplifier, and I see it when other people are talking about it as well, is there's always some guy, and he'll come along and be like, I wonder how that cheap piece of junk looks on some test equipment. And what they're saying is, is that they believe that this has spurious emissions or uh, harmonics that do not meet the FCC's criteria uh, for a device like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to a spectrum analyzer and see what it does. Now, in order to pull this magic off, we're going to use uh, my IC705 as the exciter for the amplifier. So we're going to run a cable from the antenna output of this right into the amplifier. And then the output of the amplifier, uh, which looks like it's going to be right here, is going to go into this NSA digital SWR and meter. So we'll be able to see the power out here and we'll be able to see that the amplifier is working and we'll see what the output's going to be. From the NSA digital SWR and watt meter, we're going to run the signal through this big ass attenuator. And then from this attenuator, it's going to go into my Siglin SAA 3021X spectrum analyzer. And we'll be able to take a look there and see if it does in fact have spurious emissions or not. So let me get all this set up because it's going to be a giant pain in the butt. And once I do, we'll come back, we'll take a look at it and see what's happening. All right, see you soon. Do you need help with your latest project? Look no further than PCBWay.com. At PCBWay.com, they pay attention to every detail. Quality is important at PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com specializes in custom solutions to meet your specific project needs. With fast and easy shipping, PCBWay.com won't leave you waiting around. Try them today. Man, just look at all these dang old wires. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about emission standards and why we do these tests and why we look at things the way we look at them. If you'd like to get a copy of this, what I would suggest is just Google 97.307 emission standards and you should get a lengthy document. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not interpreting this for you and I'm not giving any legal advice. But I think what we're most interested in is subpart D. I think it's called subpart D. And it says for transmitters installed after January 1st, 2003. So that is that is my system, right? The mean power of any spurious emission from a station transmitter or external RF power amplifier, which is the case that we have here, transmitting on a frequency below 30 megahertz. Again, that's what we have here. Must be at least 43 dB below the mean power of the fundamental emission. So we're going to use that as our baseline for success or fail criteria. Okay, here's our setup. Uh, we have the IC7300, and then uh, we have the power meter and the amplifier. So let me go ahead and get the 7300 fired up. And then you can see we're on the 10 meter band, and we're going to use ready to generate a carrier signal. And when I'm over here, I am set for 15 to 10 meters. And when I key up, that's what happens. Now, one of the things I can do is I can go here and I can look at my RF power. And as I adjust this up or down, you can see that there's a correlation to the power output from the amplifier. See that? Um, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to take this camera and I'm carefully going to uh, position it over, let's see if we can do this, well, all right, to the spectrum analyzer. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll, do, some, we'll do some good old fashioned down home testing. So let's go ahead and get started. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do screen caps for anything of interest that comes up on the spectrum analyzer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at 10 meters. Give me one second. Okay, what I wanted to do is zoom in a little bit more on the spectrum analyzer. Um, the first thing I want to do is just go to frequency. And I know you're not going to be able to see this very well. But what we're doing is we're starting down here at 0 hertz. And we're going up to 500 megahertz. And that should capture everything that we're interested in capturing. Uh, what I'm going to do now is start my marker display. And I'm going to key up. 
and this is on the 10 meter band and you can see down here on the marker 2800 and what we're seeing is is that this is a marker um at 44.8 dbm and there are no harmonics or spurious emissions so we look clean on the 10 meter band so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust oh we got my arm in the way sorry about that we're going to adjust everything and we're going to make a jump and we're going to do this at uh, 14 uh megahertz or the 14 meter band and when i key up you can see we have two different things here so let me set marker one to the peak and uh, i'll do a screen cap and roll this in but what you can see here is that our peak is at 46.2 db and our delta marker marker number two is only down about 39 to 40 db uh, let me go ahead and get a screenshot of this and where's my enter key and uh, what you can see there is, is that we would have a failure on uh, on uh, 20 meters or 14 megahertz, which kind of sucks because I like this I like this uh, I like that band and I like using the sample in that band. But it looks like until further testing proves that out, which I don't think it will, um, I'm not going to operate on 20 meters with this. So now we are at 40 meters, and so let me go ahead and key up there, and let me go over to peak and what you can see is we're at 45.8 db uh, this is reading 41 watts um, and we have no spurious emissions so we're clean there as well let me key that up and uh, let me just go ahead and i'll get a, a picture of that that we can uh, we can show up close to and uh, for fun i guess we'll go down to 80 meters let me turn this and i'm going to key up and let me move that to our peak. And then what I'll do is I'll hit save and enter. So we have a copy of that. But we're at 45 dB and we don't have any spurs. One thing I want to show, and I think I forgot to, on the 20 meter band. And I know people will say, well, hey, did you? So let me just go ahead and do this. Uh, when we take a look at these two, some folks might say, hey, well, how do you know that number two is actually coming out of the amplifier? And it's not a result of some goofiness that's happening, happening inside of the... Uh, inside this spectrum analyzer, which can happen sometimes. So what I can do is I can key up and then I can adjust my, I can adjust my power output. Uh, and you can see both of them are dropping at the same rate or rising at the same rate when I raise or lower the power output. So that's how we know that that second spur at marker number two is legitimate. Folks, um, that's not exactly the news I wanted to give, but it does look like it's dirty on, uh, on 20. And so what we're going to do is not use it on there. I want to thank everybody for watching. I totally appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.